Um, let me see. I can't do that. I'll do this. Do, 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 do. That's me too. Say again? That, that's me too. Do it one more time. The number 52. Oh, 52. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. So this problem here, is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, oh yeah, okay. So we've done, we've done finding the max and min. We've done finding the intercept of two functions. Um, and I think, I thought we had done this, but probably not. But it's the same idea. So let me just pick a different. Let me put in here something different. Let's say x squared minus 11. I just don't want to do exactly your homework, but if I graph, is everybody with me that wants to be with me? I didn't bring my calculus with me. Okay. So if you graph this thing, I might it might look weird for you. But remember, whenever you put a brand new function in, you can always do zoom six come back to a standard window, and then you can move it around if you need to. How many x-intercepts are on that graph? Two. Two. Dad, come in. All right. It's definitely two, so let's find one of them. Which one do you want to find? The positive one. Positive one, okay. So this is going to be very similar to finding the max or the min. It's going to ask you three questions, right? What's your favorite? Right now, right now, yes. So if I do second, trace, I want to calculate something. I'm going to calculate the zero. So you've heard me say this before, find the zero of the function. Another name for the zero of a function is the x-intercept. It's where the output is zero. You guys all with me. So x-intercepts, we also call them zeros. We also call them roots because math people are crazy, right? Roots make sense because that's where roots for most plants start. Um, if I select this operation, it's gonna ask me three questions. It's gonna want to know the left outside. You told me you wanna find the positive one, right? So I put my cursor right on the answer. It left a few times, so that's definitely to the left of the answer. Now it wants a right bound, so I put the cursor back on the answer and go right a few steps. That's definitely to the right of the answer. And then it wants a guess, so I put the cursor right on top of the answer. I give it my guess. That is the x-intercept. The, the positive one. Does anyone have a guess for the negative x-intercept? Negative 3, 5, right? Because it's symmetric. In this case, you're on the y-axis, are you guys, because it wasn't moved left to right. Are you guys kind of with me? Does that make sense? Yeah. That's how I find the x-intercept for any damn function anywhere. Use it in my calculator. Now, real quick, can anyone tell me if I make this a plus, do you even have to graph it to know what the answer to what are the x-intercepts? What happens to this parabola x squared if I do x squared plus 11? It's going to move up. So is it going to ever go hit the x-axis? It starts above the x-axis, and it goes away from it, correct? You guys with me? What's up? Good. It would have imaginary, but if I'm talking about graphs, it has no real x-intercepts. So for a graph of this, there would be no x-intercepts. If I allowed, which we're not going to do in this class, imaginary graphing, that are all the colors, then it would have two x-intercepts. They just happen to be complex. Is that cool? That's a good point. When we're talking about graphing in this class, it's almost always going to be real numbers. It's going to be a very small set of things we're going to do with complex numbers. Okay, how are you guys doing all right? Yeah, this is a lot for Monday morning, Jeff. I know. Anything else from homework? One more thing, maybe, before we move on? Oh, yeah, I have a quick question. 
Yeah. Um, section 2.1, number 10. So we just have to get y by itself and then set it to zero? If you want to, you don't have to. Oh, you don't have to? Okay. The instructions say find the x-intercept and the y-intercept without graphing, correct? Okay, yeah. How do I find the y-intercept for any function in the universe? Set to zero. Well, it has x and y. Set x to zero. How do I find the x-intercept? Set y to zero. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to do any pre-work unless you want to. If you solve for y, you can see the y-intercept just by looking at it. Is that true? If I solve it for y, what form will this be in? If I solve it for y, what form will it be in? Am I supposed to be? So you can just see what the b is, right? But will that help you with the x-intercept? No. So it's up to you. Yeah, it is. Hey. Okay. Let's see, Lisa, Lisa here, Aaron, Jinwan, no, okay. All right, guys, so, yeah, oh yeah, uh, did anyone else not get, this, the update. Well, I did sort of. Um, oh, sorry. Um, any quiz you miss, and you've communicated to me that you missed it and gave me a reason, uh, the next test you take will take the place of the missing quiz grade also. So the next test you take will just count a little more to cover your ass for the missing quiz. Does that make sense? You guys with me? That's not an automatic thing I do, right? You have to have a valid reason for missing a quiz, and then I do that. Okay. It's not a good, uh, I'm not saying you're going to do this. It's not a good idea just to miss, because then you miss lecture after the quiz too, which is bad. Um, but it's a nice way for me to do it quickly without you getting a zero on the quiz. You still have to show me a notion on the test. So it's a nice compromise. Okay. All right. So I think last time we made it into section 5.1. They got a little review sheet. But just to kind of remind you guys what 5.1 was. So this is where we talked about uh, axis of symmetry, finding a point by, uh, by, by symmetry, putting uh, parabolas into standard form, right? Um, so let's kind of do a quick review. I'll give you the little sheet I've got. We'll do some other review. And by the way, for the people that just got the homework sheet, notice test two when it is what it covers. That's changed. And also the sections in green are extra credit. You can do them or not, and you'll be fine. Um, that's true, but I think I don't want to do that. That's fine. So, can you guys help me with this here? Arc. Arc. Um, putting that into what we call standard form, what I sometimes call vertex form. Does anyone remember? Completely square. 
complete the square. So what's kind of like in my way? Make a little room. I'm going to move that minus 3 out the way. But, right? And then what do I need to do? Because completing the square is hardwired on some fact. That's not true. So I'm going to make it true. Because we're the humans. We get the power. Huh? So Factor out the negative 4. And I get x squared minus 6x. So whatever, I really want you to understand. If you understand what I'm about to say, you understand why we do what we do. There is no negative 6 in that equation. Do you guys agree with me? I know it says negative 6 right there, but so what? What is it really? It's really 24. I'm about to put a number right there, right? Whatever number I put there is not what I actually did because it's negative 4 times that. So let me show you one little thing you can do to kind of help yourself out. What are the two steps for completing the square? You just don't work anywhere, do you? Yeah. Two steps for completing the square. Divide 6 by 2. Yeah, take the middle term, divide by 2. And then I square. That's the number I'm going to do what with? You're going to stick it between the 24x and the minus 3. No. No. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, what did you say it was? 5.1. Oh, this is 5.1. Yeah, that's right. I'm not doing homework question. This is where we left off. So this is what we did last time, right? So be careful. I'm not here. I'm there. So I'm going to add that 9 right there, correct? Yeah. What you can do for yourself is the minute you determine this, yeah. negative 4 times 9, so that is what I'm really doing. Are you guys with me? That's what I'm really doing to that part of the equation. So when I put the plus 9, I've really done this. So at the same time, what do I better do out here? I already subtracted 36. That would be subtracting 72. That would be a completely different parabola. Yes? Take away the 9. Add 36. Yes. So what did I just do to the equation when I put the plus 9 oh, in there? Oh, you took it away. I took 36 away. So correct? now you've got to add it. The down. same reason there's no negative 6, it's actually a plus 24. If I put a plus 9 there, that's not what I, I didn't add 9. I subtracted 36, so at the same time I better add 36. And again, you don't have to watch Raider's Lost Ark, but that's what I'm doing right now. Take the gold statue away, put this bag of sand on, right? We're better. We wouldn't have the boulders coming after us because we're going to freaking balance the equation correctly. Maybe. I'm going to have to watch that movie again. Okay. Everybody cool with the plus nine? Is anybody not cool with the plus nine? We all need to be really pretty okay with completing the square. <clears throat> the thing that freaks people out is this, understandably. But if I put a plus nine, I didn't just add nine. I subtracted 36. So I better add 36 at the same time to kind of keep things the same. Yes? Well, where did 36 come from? When I put, so real quick. If I am just sitting here and somebody comes along and takes four away and I want to keep it the same, I'm going to add four, correct? Correct. Okay, good. So that's the same as x. Okay. What did I just do when I put a plus nine there? What did I just do to the equation? I just took away 36. subtracted 36, so I better add 36 so I don't change the problem. That is still the same problem as it was. Same way as this is still x, it just looks more complicated, correct? In fact, this would be stupid because this doesn't help me. This helps me. How does that help me? What can I do now with this piece? Factor. And how does it factor? Negative 3. Yeah. x minus 3 squared. What do I get out there? 33. 33. Okay. Become a 3. Understand. So the next question would be, what's the vertex of this thing? Three thirty-three. Three thirty-three. I love 
it goes, it goes right three, like Philip said, and then it goes up 33. Stop for a minute. Say again? Yeah. Yeah. Which way does this parabola open? Down. Is it skinny or wide? Wide. Or kind of. The slope is big. It's going to go down fast. It's going to be skinny. Oh. Yeah. Somebody with me. If I put a one fourth there, that's going to make it go down slower. So it's going to be wide. Kind of with me. If I put a one there, it's a normal parabola. If I put a one fourth there, it's wide. If I put a four there, it's skinny. It's going up really fast. I'm so confused how we get to 34. Mm -hmm. You're cool with the nine? Yeah. You're cool with the fact that that's not a six, it's a 24? Yes. Why is that a 24? Because it, we um, took the factor out. So what is this really? This isn't a nine. 36. Minus 36. So I better do oh, one at the same okay, time. Got it. Yeah. I added this piece. So I changed the parabola until I do this, that brings it back to what it was, right? I know a lot of us out there, you like to kind of like, oh, I don't like that problem, I'm gonna make it different. Some of you guys do that accidentally, some of you guys do it on purpose, but it's okay, right? So I'm not allowed to make the problem I'm given different, I'm not. So anything I change, I better counterbalance that. And what we normally do is, if I subtract 36 from one side, I subtract it from the other side but I really don't have two sides to work with. It all has to happen on one well, side. Why is it positive 36 and not negative? Did we add 36 or subtract 36 when we put the nine there? Um, we subtracted. So to counterbalance that, I better oh, okay. add. Got it. I like it. So again, if I start with X and I take four away, to make it become X again, I have to do what? Uh, add the four back. Yeah, I gotta undo what I just did. Yeah. That's silly. That doesn't do shit for us, right? There's no way I would tell you to go subtract four. No, add four. <laughs> Look at you. This, why does this help? It's the same idea, but now I've reorganized shit so I can do this. That's the point. I want to put it in this form. What's so special about this damn form? I can see the freaking vertex, right? Just like solving for y lets me see the slope and the y intercept. Exactly the same idea. Later this semester, I think I said this before, we're going to have circles. If we put them in the right form, I could just see the center and I can see the radius. If I put it in the right form. This is, this is a thread through a lot of mathematics. If you got it in the right form, you know a lot of shit. Okay. Yes? Since it's x minus 3 squared, wouldn't that end up being a positive 6? How does that? No, of course not. Uh, if you write x minus 3 twice, uh -huh. negative 3x, negative 3x, negative 6x. So, x minus 3 squared is this, negative 3 and negative 3 minus 6. And then, of course, plus 9 at the end, right? Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, 9 is positive. Okay. Sure. Yes, cool. So for us, since at the moment we're only talking about parallels that open up or down, the axis of symmetry will always be x equals something. And since the axis always runs through what point? The vertex. The vertex, it's going to be x equals whatever the shit that is. So if they want to know the axis of symmetry, which is heretofore known as aos, you just got to say x equals 3. If it opens sideways, it would be y equals 33. Maybe. That's later this semester. Yay, something to look forward to. Right now we're just doing the standard parabola that doesn't open sideways. Okay. All right, let's stop for a minute. You guys doing all right? Sort of? Okay. So just to give us a, a slightly better looking thing to look at here, I'm going to erase all this. It's on, it's on the video. That is so true. Um, Let's say I've got, because normally the ones I want you to graph, I'm not going to make them so kind of gross. 
I would give you one, you would put it in standard form, and it would come out to be maybe this here. Hmm. Right? Can anyone tell me what the vertex of this is? I got a one suit kick ass. Does it open up or down? Down. Down. Because of the negative there. Take a minute and graph it. Well, I'll do it with you because I got this on that sheet anyway. I'll make you graph something later. Opens down, vertex is negative one, two. I always get a little high off the markers, it's always nice. Keep the little head, keep going. Um, so obviously I plot the vertex first, not a bad place to start, negative one, two. What other point can we figure out? Y intercept. How do I find the y intercept? Yeah, make x zero. So we got negative two times zero plus one squared plus two. This one's kind of nice. Zero. Yeah, you get negative two plus two is zero. So the y intercept is. We made x zero, right? And we got y zero, so zero to zero. Right? So I made x zero and I got y zero, so that's zero zero. Zero zero. So where's there another point? It's got to be symmetrical for that, so it's going to be right. like a minus three. Minus two. Yeah, minus two, right? Yeah. Negative two zero. You guys all with me? Because that's the symmetry, that's the mirror, so it's going to be equidistant. That, that's almost too nice to believe. I need three points to really get a parabola because I need to know how fast it's curving on both sides. That point I got because it was already there. This point I got by making x zero. This one I got just by eyeballing the sucker, right? Yes? What happens to the one for the y-intercept? Oh, so negative two times one is negative two plus two is zero. Um. Uh, then you get this. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. Some people's eyebrows are going. <clears throat> Any questions on anything that just happened? Are you able to do that yourself? We're going to find out in a minute. Let me think. Was there anything else before I throw this at you? Oh, it's on the back. Is it on the back of your? Is that what I got back here? Yes. So the back of your uh, homework sheet that I just gave out. I want you to do these problems. These. And you know things go better when you work with others. So please feel free to. Do I want to force you into groups? I don't know. All right, try them out. We'll see what happens. Has everybody got one of these? Yeah. It's on the back of your homework sheet that I just gave out. Oh. Anybody need that? Here's the sucker. So everybody got this, then you've got that. Okay. Call me over, you, over if you need help. For this. So we've got this first one in here. What's the vertex going to be? 2, negative 1. Yeah. So I, it's kind of nice. The vertex just sort of collects the transformations because the vertex starts at 0, 0. Um, will somebody else tell me, is it open up or down? It opens up. Why? Positive. Crazy, crazy, crazy. This one, you kind of go, thank God I don't have to graph this, but what's the vertex? Negative 5.1. Negative 5.1. 13, it opens down. Now, real quick, if this opens up, that is the location of a minimum. Yeah, and if it opens down, the, the vertex is the location of a maximum. Is that, is that straightforward, right? That's why most profit functions 
look like this or something normally. There's more variables, so it's going to look freakier. But then you have these maximal profits. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. So a friend of mine, he was a financial ad uh, advisor, making tons of money because his his job was to analyze market data and then set the price point so that the profit would be as close to the maximum as possible. And every day it was shifting a little bit, basically. So it was always adjusting the equations. I would never want to do that. I love math. I hate business. But, you know, more power to them. Um, me with you so far, because that comes up later. This guy, I didn't say, but I kind of should have. I need you to put this into standard form. On the test or something, I would say... Put it in a standard form. Um, so I take the negative two out. Is that cool so far? And then the two steps are take the middle term, cut it in half, and then square that. There's a negative two out front, so what I'm really doing is that. So I put this number here, which means I just subtracted two. So I better do what? Add two. Add two. Add two. Cool. Okay, I like it. And then if you put all this business together, this tells you how to factor it. And then I got that. So what's the vertex? Negative one. Four. Negative one four. Does it up and up or down? Um, what's the axis of symmetry? No? Axis for Yeah, you got it. I know. Let's pick you guys. The max is really low. Uh, what else do I want? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, what's the y intercept? What's the easiest place to see the y intercept? Well, get, uh, no. Very beginning. Y intercept is 0, 2. I don't have to do shit. Oh, I do have to do shit. Make x zero isn't the only number left at two. You guys with me? The same reason b is the y-intercept. That's why two is the y-intercept because it's the only thing left alive that can make x zero. Let me stop for a minute. So I got my. What kind of scale do I want? Looks like I can just use a standard normal scale, one to five here, right? Be really careful. You got to pick a good scale. If the vertex was negative one twenty-seven or something. Okay. You don't want to make a better scale. Okay. I don't know what that was. Y intercept is 0, 2. Vertex is negative 1, 4. So where is there another point of coordinate? I have a question, Jeff. Sure. In your top part there, you go where you factored out the minus 2. Yep. Uh, how come it's not minus 1 after the 2x. How did we create the 1? Well, you, you put the 1 out the minus 2. No, 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 no. No, we didn't create the 1. It wasn't there. Didn't we figure it out? Well, there's the plus 2. There's a plus 2. That's right. And then what's the steps? Cut that in half and then square it. In fact, this number will always be positive, right? Well, wait a minute. So that plus one wasn't there. Oh, I there. see that plus two is, I, yeah. Okay. Took a negative two out, so that became a plus two X, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Now again, okay. if you show all your work, and you just keep going, even if you make a mistake at this early stage, as long as you graph it based on your work, you'll get a decent number of points, right? If you make a little silly mistake, or if you square something and it comes out negative and you keep going, I'm going to take points off for that. But if the rest of it's good, you're fine. If your graph is all wrong, but it's because you did work wrong, you're not going to lose any points on the graph. Does that make sense? The worst thing in the world to do in this class is to give me a perfect graph, but your work is not right. Do you understand that? I want your graph to match your work. Because part of what I'm... I'm testing you on is, are you able to interpret the algebraic work and make it visual? So if you make a mistake here and you thought maybe the vertex was positive 1, 4, I want to see the vertex as positive 1, 4. I'm not going to take points off for that. I might take a point off for like making it one, negative uh, 1 instead of negative 1. Are you guys at all with me?
Have I told you what, I don't know if I've told you what pre-calculus really is yet, which is funny. What week is it? You ready for this? I think you might be ready. Pre-calculus is graphing help. Pre-calculus, the point of pre-calculus is to study the hell out of graphs. We're going to be graphing a lot, and I need your graphs to show detail. If I say sketch something, that could be a little less detailed. But if I say graph something, it better be freaking detailed. Are you guys kind of with me? Because the whole point is when you take calculus, you want graphs to be quick. You want to be able to draw a rough sketch, get a good thing, know what things look like, understand, so that the calculus you could do on top of that, you're not learning all of it at once. That'd be horrendous. Okay. Um, so where's the other point? I'm sorry. Yeah, so one away here, so one away there. So that is the third point using symmetry, is that one right there. Yes? Would you want us to kind of like show the whole graph? Second, sorry? Do you want us to like show like the whole graph? Show the whole graph. How do you mean? Because I kind of like cut it short. I didn't really get it. As long as you have arrows showing that goes forever oh. that direction, you're good. Yeah. So you mean you did like a little... You did like this. Show up. Yeah. Show up. Okay, that's that's okay. Yes. This was the vertex, right? We found that. This was the y-intercept. We found that. Parabolas are symmetric, right? And the axis is the, is the mirror. So if there's a point here, there must be a point equidistant on the other side. That's the reflection. There is a reflection. If I have something that's symmetric, that means that one part of it is a reflection of the other part. So if I know a point's there, and here's the mirror, there must be another point equidistant, just like in a normal mirror. There's that weird dude staring at you, or dudette, or whatever, staring at you when you look in the mirror. What's your deal? <coughs> equidistant? Okay, maybe. Okay. Is there any other questions on this guy here? So there's several things happening, right? You, you have to understand how to complete the square, understand how to read off the vertex, and then you have to understand how to graph what you found. Right? There's kind of three main steps to this. Um, did anyone try number, oh, before I get too far, how would you find these by hand? These points, how would you find these, what's, what are these points? X-intercepts, how would I find those? If I asked you to find the X-intercepts, how would you do it? Would you just draw it in a circle like I did? You think that's good enough? <clears throat> yeah, and then you would have to probably use the form. quadratic form, right? Because uh, that's not going to be factorable, so you can use the quadratic formula. You guys with me? There could be some homework questions, and I could ask you now on the test. I say, find the x-intercepts. You just make y zero. Maybe you have to use a quadratic formula if it doesn't factor. You guys, okay? Okay. Maybe. Um, number three, the shortcut that we developed was this. Just remember that a vertex has two parts to it, right? So just doing negative a over 2a is not good enough. Because a point always has two parts and a vertex is a point. What is b in that equation? 8. 8, good. So it would be negative 8 over twice, and what's a? Negative 2. Negative 2, so it's negative 8 over negative 4, which is? 2. Holy yeah. shit. That is the x piece of the answer. So how do I find the y piece? Yeah, anytime you know the x, you just plug it in to figure out the y. So I get y equals negative 2 times 2 squared plus 8 times 2 minus 7. What the hell's all that? Is that 5? No, negative 8 plus 16. No, Jeff. 16 minus 8 is 8 minus 7 is 1. Is that 1? I'm one right there. Yeah. Is that all right? Okay. Okay. 
could do all the completing the square business, but if all I want is a vertex, I can stop right there. Is it a max or a min? Is that the location of a maximum or a minimum? Is that the top of the hill or the bottom of the valley? Why is it a max? Because this parabola opens down. So that could be a profit function that's the top of the hill. It's where I want to get to, but the damn thing's always moving anyways. Maybe, 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 maybe. By the way, there's nothing wrong with on a test. If you are doing a part that you can use graph and calculator, be really careful to copy from the damn thing, but you can certainly just graph the damn thing, right? There's nothing that I can do to stop you. And you can check your work. How do you find the maximum in the calculator? You just use the maximum function, right? You guys with me? So if I were you, I'd check my damn work if I had time. I might leave that for the end. If I have time, I'll go back and start checking some of my work. Why the hell not, right? You guys with me? There will be some parts of some tests where you won't have the calculator. Ha ha. Because I am evil. I've come to terms with that. All right. Does anyone try anything with this? Can you draw that? Rectangle, yay. Side lengths x and 10 minus x. Okay, there you go. There you go, there it is. What's the area of that? What's the area of a rectangle? X. Multiply those together, right? Length times width, so what do you get? times 10 minus x. I like it. So area equals negative x squared plus 10x. Or I made the plus sign. X. I want to know the maximum area. Well, what the hell shape would that function make? Down. Down. Right? So where is the maximum then? at the vertex. Do we have a shortcut to find the vertex? Mm -hmm. Shit, yeah! All right. So what is the shortcut to find the vertex? Negative <laughs> B Good. over 2A. All right. What's B? Negative 2 times 10. And what's A? 1. Negative 1, sorry. Negative 5. Is that the answer? That's how long the side length would be, right? What's the area? Well, if this side length is 5, what's the other side length? If this is 5, what's this? That would be negative 5. No. That would be a funky ass record. Right? If that's 5, 10 minus 5 is 5, correct. So what is it really? What special kind of rectangle? It's where? So, and so the area would be what? If I have a rectangle and I want to maximize the area of that rectangle, I just make it a square, always. It's kind of nifty. You guys kind of with me? Real quick, do any of you, sorry, good. How come it's just so wide and it's out? Sorry? How is the area of the Oh, you can also, so what I did was, I know x is five, so I know the other side is five, and then just multiply this together. What do you get when you plug 5 into the area function? You better get 25 or this whole thing is shit. What's 5 squared? 25. Negative 25 plus 10 times 5. Negative 25 plus 50. 25. Right. That's the area function. So if I know what x is and throw it in there, it better give me the area. But the way I did it was more immediately physical. I know that side's 5. I know the other side's 5. Area is 25. Either way will work. Yeah. Would we have to write 25 squared? To, to no, because that, that, no, it'd be, normally in a test I give you units, so I didn't give us any units here. Okay. So if it was feet, it would be 25 square feet. Okay. Here you could say 25 square units, because okay. that won't tell you what the units are. So 25 squared or 25 No, squared? 25 squared would make it 625. Okay. And would that be squared too? Would it ever end? No. So you could do this. B10. Yeah, so well, where's A? In front of the x squared. What's in front of the x squared? 
Lägger du på? Yes, good. Mm-hmm. All right, okay. Yes. I'm so confused on what you mean by the maximum area. Oh, uh, the area function. Do you all do you agree with me that the area function we got is, I'm sorry, keep pointing because there's a, the area function we got is a down parabola. Yeah. Cool. So then the maximum will be at the vertex. Oh. That's it. Yeah. Anytime we have a function that is parabolic, it will either have a minimum or a maximum. So in word problems, if I have a situation that ends up with a quadratic equation, modeling it, I can figure out the max or min. Easy. Calculus is where you learn what if it's not quadratic? What if it's funky as shit? And it's got multiple maximums. Calculus makes finding those easy. Right now, uh -uh. <laughs> we're going to deal just with problems. So we're kind of stuck. We can only do very basic problems. But it's the building point for later. Right? What happens in higher level mathematics? You add more variables and you learn new processes to handle more real life situations. Uh, okay, sorry. Is that cool? Okay. I love that question. All right. So there will be questions where you have to model the situation. They have to come out parabolic because that's where we can find the vertex. Real quick, remind me, why was this one a maximum? Sorry, why was this one a maximum? Opens down. I love it. That's why it's going to be a maximum. If it opens up, it's going to be minimum kick ass. Um, okay. This is pretty much section 5.1, what we did last time. So, believe it or not, we're going to get into 5.2. I just want to show you what we're getting into. We're slowly getting into polynomial functions. We start with kind of like the building blocks of polynomial stuff. Oh, your transition. Hmm? Sorry. Oh, you're good. So all a power function is, all right, that's a power function. That's crazy. To see the idea, somebody can somebody give me a different power function? Crazy stuff. Okay. So power function is a single term where the variable is raised to a power. That's crazy. No. But, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, polynomials will be combinations of power functions. Does that make sense? What do you guys think about this? Is this a power function? No. no. It could be because it's one. Sure, it's one. Why does it make it a power function? Because it's well, because one, one, one squared is one, and one cubed is one. And What's x to zero? One. Yeah. Yeah, whatever, Jeff. Okay. So, basically, this first section is not going to be horrendous. It's kind of like a building block. We're just dealing with single terms. Now, real quick, can somebody give me an example of a polynomial? To be really honest, these are all polynomials, but like a more fully formed polynomial. Can anyone give me a polynomial? Anything you want. Cubed plus. Second. X cubed plus five. Yeah. Okay. She's sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So polynomial in general is uh, it could be a n x to the n plus a n minus one x to the n minus one. Does that look gross? Yes. All this says is numbers in front of variables with possibly lower powers as they go. Right. So 
x to the seventh plus five, x to the sixth minus seven, x to the fourth plus two, x squared minus one is a polynomial. As long as the powers are whole numbers. So is this a polynomial? Nope. Yeah. Is this a polynomial? What are whole numbers, guys? It's, it's a rational exponent, so that would be a no. Right? Exactly. What are whole numbers really quickly? Which number looks like a whole? Two. Zero. So whole numbers are the numbers that start at zero. Zero, one, two, three. Yeah. Integers include negative stuff, right? Can I include decimals? No. Whole numbers are whole. They don't have any decimal part. All right, real quick, what's a mixed number, guys? Can somebody tell me a mixed number? One and a half. One and a half. It's a whole number mixed with a fractional number. So when I say whole number, that means no decimal, no fraction. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. You guys all with me? Somebody with me? Okay. So it only has whole It only has whole number exponents. So this is not good because it's a negative number exponent. This is not good because it's a fractional exponent, right? These are not polynomials. Another reason we like polynomials is I know they've not, they're nice. Oh. <laughs> they go like this, right? So cubic could go like this. What? So it looks sort of like a Loch Ness monster is what I was thinking. Loch Ness monster. Okay. Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. Now, real quick, what I just said is kind of like the next stage of this. Um, what is true about every even power function? They're uh, parabolas. They're parabolas. I love it. So if I have a power function raised to an even power, what will it look like? Yeah, it's going to be like this. I'm going to do something weird. It would be parabolic, right? So the ends are going to go like this. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially if it is positive, correct? Yeah. So what if it was <laughs> negative x to the even? What would it's it look like at the ends? Down. down at the ends, right? Yeah. Incredibly enough, because math people are really creative, we call that end behavior because it's how it's behaving at the end. You guys all with me? And yeah, that's a lot better of a name than we normally do. Some of our names are horrible. You guys all with me? So when I say find the end behavior, that's basically all you're doing is you're looking at the power and seeing is it going like that, is it going like that, is there a negative sign that's making it flip? So, so x odd looks like what? Mike, you like to do this? Yeah, exactly, I love it. I love some of you guys are doing this Egyptian thing. Um, so yeah, it's going to go like this. Is this cool? Do you guys see what I mean by this, by the way? I, if it was really just x cubed, it would be this. But what I'm believing is there could be some weird shit happening in the middle. That's going to be the next section. And of course, what would happen if it was um, negative x to the odd? Yeah, it would just flip, right? So now it's going to go there. Yes? I'm confused about the negative part, though. And if it's in parentheses with the negative, or like a negative number? No, I mean, for example, I could have a function like um, negative x to the fifth. All that negative does is reflex it, correct? Oh. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why parabola would go down. Uh, this guy just shifts. They just flip, correct? Is that all right? But how would that work with the even one? Same idea. So uh, positive x to the even. If I put a negative, it flips. That's all. Oh. Just like we were saying a minute ago, a negative in the front makes the parabola open down, right? Okay. Okay. Yes? Does it do well in parabola practice if you The quiz only goes up through 4 1. This was from 5 1. 
So again, I don't like to quiz you on stuff until I until most of you should be done with the homework. And most so what that's communicating to you is I think you should be done with 401 homework, if not already by tomorrow. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, all right. So the next kind of step to this, um, we're going to get fully into polynomial stuff. Somebody's kind of good with this here. Let me show you a few examples. I'll do this. Let me show you a few examples with my buddy Desmos. exactly what we would expect. Good old cat is going on, right? If I throw, let me see what kind of thing I can make. If I throw a few more terms in this, oh sure, that'll work. Do you see how it's still at the ends? Is it still doing the exact same thing at the ends? Yes. Going up from there and going up on that side, but in the middle it's got some curvy shit going on. You with me? That's why in general we talk about end behavior. I can tell what that is, and then we do some more steps to figure out what the shit is it doing in the middle. So if I made that first exponent a fourth power, does it look parabolic at the end? Yes, in the middle it's going to be around, it's got boobs. Sure. Put a seventh power, blah, blah, I think you guys get it. Still looks cubic at the ends, but it's got a little wobble in the middle. Yes? So on the quiz tomorrow, are we just identifying the actual polynomials or are we solving them too? So I never quiz you on something the next day right after we first got into something. So the, the quiz is only up through 4 1. This is 5 2. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, let's see, let me show you anything else. If I throw, let's see, let's see what I can do here. There we go. I know I got some weird shit going on. Look at that, look at that little dude. Anyway, sorry. So later in chapter five, we will start talking about how do we fill in the middle of it. Because if I give you this whole thing, you just have to look at the highest power. So what's the end behavior going to be? That, right? We then do a few more steps to figure out what the shit is doing in the middle. Are you guys kind of with me? Yeah. All right. By the way, x squared stuff, how many turning points would you say in x squared stuff? One. There's one turning point, correct? So it's got a power of two, and there's one turning point. You with me? If I go back to my dad, gummit, GF, why don't you do all this weird shit? Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get back to. Yeah, good. How many turning points does this cubic have? Mm -hmm. Two. It has a power of three. Do you guys all agree there's two points where it turns? Yes. That's what turning points is. It's awesome. You guys all with me? So what's what do you think our generalization I can make? Whatever the highest power is, oh, it'll have at most one less turning point. Are you guys all with me? Okay. So um yeah, that's right, that's right. I want to remind myself what I was gonna do next. Very quickly, and then we'll head out. Um, you guys remember, I think I've said this word already. You guys remember, if I give you a polynomial, can you tell me? First off, what's the end behavior of that? Yeah, so it's odd, so it's going to look cubish, 
what I call it, right? A friend of mine, a colleague calls it the giraffe graph. But I always joke him, this giraffe, somebody cut his front leg off, that's evil. <laughs> so, so giraffe graph, if you like that, you can use it. I always call it cubish, right? So every odd uh, degree, so I just said a magic word. Degree of a polynomial is the highest degree term I see. So the, the degree of this, the degree of a term, it's just the, the number of variables in it. So it's two x's. This has got a second degree. This would be what degree? First degree. This would be what degree? Zero. Good. Zero variable, zero degree. And this would be? Fifth degree. So what's the highest degree we see? Fifth. So this is a fifth degree polynomial. Crazy sauce. So what about this here? Uh, what do you got to show? 20th degree. 20th degree. Can somebody be specific? What kind of polynomial is this? How many terms are there? Three. So a bike that has three wheels is called a trinomial. tricycle. So this is a trinomial. You guys remember those terms? So this is a 20th Degree black belt. No, try. Let's try. Trinomial. And then you got binomials and you got monomials, right? You guys remember those? That's going to be kind of thrown in this section. Okay. All right. Um, let me think. Do I have anything else for you? I think, so. I think that's plenty. Let's call it there. All right. Appreciate you guys coming out. I'll post the thing. Don't forget quiz tomorrow, first thing. Okay.